Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We do receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We thank you that we are doers of it and see the fruit of it in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Notice, what's a condition for you to be one of the sons of God? It's as many as are being led by the Spirit of God. This is a present tense, continuous action, passive voice by the Holy Spirit accomplishing this. As many as are continually being led by the Spirit of God. You're to be continually led. That's what He wants for you. Then those are the ones that are the sons of God. We brought a message a long time ago about the fact that when you get born again, you're a child of God. But as you begin to do the things that God says, you, then you become a son and a daughter of God. And that is so important. Here's an example of it. Matthew chapter 5. See, a lot of people think that, oh, well, you mean to tell me I'm not really a son of God? Not according to the scripture. That's something you develop into. Matthew 5, 44 says, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Those are commands to every single one of us. Now look at the next verse. That you may become, it's the word not be, become, get am I. That you may become, he says, subjunctive mood, the not children of your father, this is the word huios, which means a son. The sons of your father. It's the word that means sons, not children. It's been erroneously translated. Notice, conditions have to be met for you to become the sons of your father, which is in heaven. God wants us to be continually being led by the Holy Spirit so that we are the sons of God. We talked about many things today that are important and we're just going to pick up with a couple of things that we mentioned at near the end. One thing's for sure, you must be a true sheep. John chapter 10 verse 3, to him the porter openeth and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. The sheep are the ones that are led by him. He's the great shepherd of the sheep, remember? He puts forth his own sheep, they, he goeth before them and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. They would know his voice because they're so close to him. The sheep are right on the heels of the shepherd. Sheep, which is what you and I are, are to follow him closely. When we call, follow him closely, we will know his voice. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. That's what God wants you to understand. You're to be a true sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. We're not going to be those that follow the stranger because we're not going to be around the strangers. We're going to follow the way of the Lord. Another scripture we looked at that I think is very important is that if you are going to be led by the Holy Spirit, you're going to follow the way of the Word, and you're going to follow the straight and narrow path. It is not a broad path. It is a narrow way. Matthew 7, 13, enter you in at the straight gate, which means the narrow gate. The Greek word stenos means narrow. For wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That means there's ways that you can end up being led to destruction. Many, not just a few, many there be which go in thereat. You can't be one of the many you got to make sure you're one of the few. Because straight or narrow is the gate, and not narrow, it's the word flibbo, which means pressed. Pressed is the way which leadeth to life. You will be pressed because you're going to have to choose to follow the way of the Lord and resist every temptation, not turn to the right or the left, not go backwards, not do your own thing, but walk His way. And notice, few there be that find it. And we gave that scripture in which we didn't show you it, but we quoted it this morning. 
Matthew 22, 14, many are called, but few are chosen. The many are called, that's all of us are called. Why are only few chosen? Because they haven't responded to the call of God. You and I must obey the call of God. Then will be those who are the few that will be chosen. And remember, who are the ones that are going to be coming back with the Lord? Now, there's another classification as well. Revelation 17, 14, These shall make war of the Lamb, the Lamb shall overcome them. He's Lord of lords and King of kings. They that are with Him, who are they? Called, chosen, and faithful. That's what God wants for you. You're to answer the call of God. You're to be chosen because you have followed the way of the Word. And you have shown yourself to be faithful. Those who are faithful are the ones who are promoted. Those who are faithful, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. The faithful ones are the ones that are going to be with him. And certainly the Holy Spirit will always lead you to obey the call of God and to be choosing the things that he wants and to be found faithful before the Lord. One of the things is for sure, Galatians chapter 5, we cannot be following the flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, or the word the is not there in the Greek. It literally says walk in Spirit. And you might not fulfill, not shall not, but might not fulfill the lust of the flesh, because this is a subjunctive mood. Meaning the lust of the flesh is always there, and it's trying to drive you to do the things of the flesh, and you will fulfill that lust of flesh unless you do something else. And how is that? What's that? Walk in the Spirit. You're going to walk in Spirit according to the Word of God. The flesh lusteth against the Spirit. By the way, Spirit, it's been capitalized by the translators, but it's not capitalized in the Greek. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit. It's talking about your Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. They're contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. We've got to make sure we're following the way of the Word. Now, if you be led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. And he's talking about to the Galatian church how they went back under the Old Testament law after the way of the flesh, which was a mistake. We're to be led of the Spirit. We're not under the Old Testament law. We're not walking after the flesh. We're walking after the way of the Spirit, the Word of God, and hearkening unto it. What's the voice of the flesh? Now, the voice of the flesh is the feelings. We cannot walk after our feelings. If you walk after your feelings, you're being, the flesh is dictating what he wants you to do. And remember that the flesh has its desires and its will. We talked about that at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the will, not desires, but it's the word thelema, which means will, translated will, nearly all the time, 62 times out of the 64 uses, which is correct. Here it is, will. Fulfilling the will of the flesh and of the mind. This is a carnal mind. That's why your mind has to be renewed to the Word and has to be submitted to the Word of God. Therefore, we cannot yield to our feelings. If thoughts are coming to you from a carnal mind, feelings are coming to you, that's not coming from the Holy Spirit. That's not coming from the Word of God. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like casting out. I don't feel like getting in the Word right now. I feel like going and doing some of these other things. It'll be fun. <laughs> Uh, that's the flesh leading you. We cannot be yielding to the flesh whatsoever. You will not be walking in the Spirit if you are yielding to the flesh. And as we mentioned, we cannot be following after the Old Testament law. We see a tremendous error in the body of Christ that people continue to follow after the Old Testament law. They follow after the Ten Commandments. We're not under the Ten Commandments. That's the Old Testament law. We're under a higher law now, the law of Christ. Look what it says. 
Hebrews 7, 12, the priesthood being changed, there's made of necessity a change also of the law, not a doing away of law, a change of it. What law are we under? We're under the law of Christ, Galatians 6, 2. Now we're to walk after the commandments of Jesus Christ, and they are a higher law after the Spirit for those who have a new heart and a new spirit on the inside of them, the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we can't be walking after the ways of the Old Testament. In fact, Paul had to confront these guys because they were doing they were walking back to the Old Testament ways. And he had to confront them with their hypocrisy. Here in Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Peter, he's supposed to be, you know, one of the pillars and one of the guys that certainly be leading you in the way of walking after the Spirit. <laughs> For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Oh, he can't be around them anymore. But that was the Old Testament. The other Jews assembled or were with their act, that means to act hypocritically with. <laughs> they were followers. I tell you, you can't be a follower of those who are hypocrites or those who are compromisers or you're in trouble. He followers likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas, who was, came with, with Paul, he also was carried away, led away, it means. He himself got led away with the, with the hypocrisy. That's why you gotta stand up for what's right. You can't compromise anything or you won't be led of the Spirit for sure. When I saw they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. You think, well, why didn't he take Peter kind of aside and talk to him? You know, Peter is a pillar. Uh, he's a, he one of the 12 apostles. You know why? Because he did it before them all. He's got to be rebuked before them all. Whatever you do before one, you know, you're not going to take him aside and tell him that. No, he's got to be dealt with before them all. I said to Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, not as do the Jews, why compelst thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Uh, he got after him and corrected him. And we, you and I must realize if we're going to be led by the Spirit, we're not going to compromise. We're not going to be hypocritical whatsoever. We're going to walk after the ways of the New Testament. And remember, the New Testament law is the law of Christ. Bear you one another's and so fulfill the law of Christ. And what kind of law is this? It's not a law that the Old Testament law brought the knowledge of sin and showed them they needed a Savior and showed them they, they weren't right with God. Or what does the New Testament law do? It's different. It's the law of, that brings liberty. James 1.25, we look at the perfect law of liberty and continue there. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, the man will be blessed in his deed. If you're walking after the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, you're going to be led to walk in the law of liberty. We must understand we are responsible to walk after it. In fact, we're going to be judged according to it. James 2.12, so speak ye and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. We must walk in those ways. Now, of course, what's the new commandment that we have? It's love. We must walk in love towards everybody. In the Old Testament, they loved their, you know, their neighbor and they'd hate their enemies. No, we walk in love towards everybody now in the New Testament. We see in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 5, The Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and to the patient waiting or the steadfastness, this means, of Christ. He's going to direct you. He's going to guide you. He's always going to lead you to operate in the love of God, always. You never go outside of love. Anytime you go outside of love, you're not in the spirit, you're in the flesh. You're walking contrary to the word of God. There's never any justification for being outside of love. And the steadfastness of Christ is what we're to walk after consistently. One of the things important if we're gonna walk in the spirit is we have to guard ourselves. Second Peter chapter three, Verse 17 says, Ye beloved, ye therefore beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware. 
The word beware is actually the word philoso, which means to guard. Guard yourself, lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. That's your own firm condition. It means you can be in a firm condition, but it doesn't mean you're going to always stay there unless you walk in line with the word and guard yourself. you got, got to guard yourself so you're not led away, and that would be anything that's outside of the way of the Spirit after the Word of God. And what's the error of the wicked? Look at the, what the word wicked means. One who breaks through the restraint of law and gratifies his lusts. Otherwise, he starts walking after the lust of the flesh, doing things the way he feels and what he wants to do, and from the carnal-minded attitude. No, we must make sure that we're walking in line with the Word and we're guarding ourselves. And we have to guard ourselves from anything that's contrary to the Word, because anything contrary to the Word is unrighteous and it's lawlessness. And you've got to guard yourself, because what's happening in this day and what's going to continue to happen, lawlessness is going to abound. You see all those evil people out there in positions of authority in this government and throughout the world. They don't want to submit to anything that is in line with God's laws. They want to, just live, they want to do anything and everything but the Word of God. Because lawlessness, iniquity means lawlessness, anomia. Young corrects it. Because lawlessness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And this is the agape love. This is talking about the church. It'll wax cold. Now these are the many that aren't walking the way they should. If you walk in the Spirit, you always walk in line with the Word. You always walk in the way of righteousness. You always walk in love. You always do what is right in His sight. That is the way you, that's why you've got to set the Word of God first place in everything that you do. That's the only way you're going to be led by the Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is going to always lead you in line with the Word of God. We go over to Psalms. If we're going to be led of the Spirit, we must commit our way to the Lord. Psalms 37, verse 5. Commit your way, roll your way unto the Lord. Trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. He will bring things to pass. You've got to really commit your way unto the Lord and trust in Him. You trust in Him, because how are you going to trust in Him? Because He's a performer of His word. He will do exactly what He says as you speak the Word of God, do the Word of God, walk in all of His ways. Proverbs 16 tells something a little bit similar. Verse 3, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. We want to be led by the Spirit. We're going to commit our works, all of the things we're going to do unto the Lord, because we're going to walk God's way. We're not going to do it our way. We're not going to do it some other way. We're going to do it the way of the Word. And thy thoughts will be established. They'll be established. Otherwise, God, you commit yourself going to walk in and God will bring His thoughts to you of the things He wants you to do. And your thoughts will be established, firm, stable, and set on doing what God wants. So you're not wavering. So you're not all over the place. You don't get discouraged. You don't get down. We should never get discouraged and down and upset and, you know, negative about things. Obviously, if we commit our works to the Lord, our thoughts will be established. Why would we ever get down, discouraged, or waver? We shouldn't be. It means we obviously haven't committed our way to the Lord to put the Word of God first place the way we should. Another thing is you got to make sure you don't let the cares of this world get you down. 1 Peter chapter 5, you certainly aren't going to be led of the Spirit if you're full of care, worry, and anxiety, because that chokes the Word in you. 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care, anxiety upon Him, because He careth for you. Now, the word careth doesn't mean that He's going to be anxious for you. No, it means He cares about you. It's a different word. You're to cast all of your cares, anxieties upon Him because He cares for you. You're to be anxious for nothing. You're to pray the Word of God in every situation and put Him in operation to bring forth His promises to pass in your life. If you're going to be led of the Holy Spirit, you've got to put the Word first place. And you also need to learn to recognize the voice of the Lord. 
Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Thine ears shall hear a word behind thee. Seems like it comes out of behind me, out of nowhere, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. We turn to the right hand, we turn to the left. Otherwise, God will speak to you in lots of different ways. Many times it'll be like a word that came, you can't even tell where it came from. It came from the Spirit, it seemed like a word behind you. God will speak in these ways. You need to recognize His voice. He'll also speak to you with a still, small voice. That's why you've got to get yourself quiet and before the Lord and on, your eyes on Him. Some people are you're full of anxiety and upset and all this negative stuff. You're not going to be tuned in to hear from Him. We see in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 11, speaking here of the prophet, he speaks to, said, Go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord. Behold, the Lord passed by, <clears throat> and a great wind and strong wind rent the mountains, breaking pieces the rocks before the Lord. The Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. The Lord was not in an earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice on the inside. The devil's the one who will press you with a loud voice. He wants to make sure you hear it. He'll press you and all kinds of things. But the still, small voice will be coming from the Lord on the inside of you. Ah, when he heard it, he, he heard the right voice. You've got to learn to recognize the voice of the Lord and hear that still, small voice or that word that might come from behind you. Also, many times it won't necessarily be a word, but it'll be like an inward witness on the inside of you. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. He will witness to you. There'll be like a witness on the inside of you, a knowing on the inside of you, or what to do. But we are the children of God. So he's going to have a witness to you. Many times it's just a knowing on the inside of you. Sometimes if something's, you might have a positive witness. Other times you might have a negative witness because you know something's not right. And so it must be like a red light on the inside of you. Oh, stop, there's something wrong here. A witness. The Holy Spirit will give a witness to you, and that's another way that He speaks to you and shows you things. He also can witness to you through the conscience that's on the inside of you. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not my conscience, also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Now, your conscience will show you if you're not doing what's right. It, it's, your conscience is in your heart, and it'll show you and that's not the right thing to be doing or not the right attitude, or whatever you might have. So you're going to have to learn to not, not ignore it. You know, those who ignore it, they get their conscience seared with a hot iron, as it talks about, and be de deceived within them. We've got to make sure that we're, of course, get cleansed of everything that's not of God. If you're going to be led by the Spirit, you've got to get everything purged out. Remember, that's part of getting the position to be led by the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 9, 14, How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? The blood of Jesus Christ will work to cleanse your conscience from all this evil. And as you deal with all this, you'll come to the place of having no more conscience of sins. If you're having a conscience of sins, that's the devil working against you. Or else there's something wrong on the inside of you. Why your conscience will be showing you sins of the past. And they would not have ceased to be offered, talking about the Old Testament law, because of the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. If you've been purged, you shouldn't have a conscience of sins. If not, that means there's something still there that needs to be dealt with. Down in verse 22. This hinders people from not being able to be led by the Holy Spirit. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, cleansed 
is what this refers to, the blood of sprinkling, and our bodies wash with pure water. See, we've got to get cleansed of everything. God wants you to become a vessel that is one that he can use, and he's going to lead you by the Spirit for those who have gone through the cleansing process. In fact, that means everything's got to be rooted out that's not of him. Everything in you must come up to come out. 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, firm, immovable. And how's the foundation laid? By hearing and doing the word consistently. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Now, that also implies he knows those that are really not his. But he knows the ones that are really his. And let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from, from iniquity, which is autokia, meaning unrighteousness. These people that don't want to deal with their sin, you name the name of Christ and you won't depart from your sin and your unrighteousness, there's something wrong. Now, you must not be one of those that are his. You certainly don't have the foundation laid as you should. He goes on and says in a great house, there's not only vessels of gold and silver, but of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor, or means disgrace. Is it God's will for any vessel to be a vessel of disgrace? No. But that's what happens. Why? Because they don't do what the Word says to get rid of all the evil and get cleansed out. And they want to be led by the Holy Spirit and they've gotten cleansed out? It's not going to happen. If a man therefore purge, cleanse out thoroughly himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. God wants us to deal with everything that is in our life. All needs to be eliminated. Now another thing that we need to address to be led by the Holy Spirit, remember everything is to be in line with the Word of God. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 says, We also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn, the revelation comes, and the day star arise in your hearts, which will be his revelation manifest in you. So we're to be doing the word, and we need to take heed to that. What's the more sure word of prophecy? It's the Word of God. Now when prophecy comes, it's got to be in line with the Word of God. If it's not in line with the Word of God, don't even listen to it. When the Word of prophecy comes to you telling you something, you've got to make sure that it's the right thing. It'll give, there'll be peace on your inside of you. It will be in line with the Word of God. And also, anybody who speaks something to you it should confirm that which you know yourself or what God has confirmed to you. Don't ever follow something that somebody told you if God hasn't confirmed that to you yourself. It's be open to what people will tell you, of course, if they bring something to you, but you've got to be getting the revelation of it from God yourself. So you confirm those. It'll be confirmation to you. I've seen people just jump on what someone says and God never confirmed it to them whatsoever and it wasn't the Lord at all. And they went off in wrong directions and were totally deceived by the enemy. So we don't follow things that are spoken to us unless they're in line with the Word and they're going to be confirmed by the Lord that He will show you what He wants you to do. Another thing that we see, if you're going to hear from the Lord, you really need to become a praiser and a worshiper of God. Acts chapter 13, that is, Acts. In Acts chapter 13, here it speaks that these ones were the prophets and the teachers, those people were there. It says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, to silence the flesh, they heard from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I've called them. They were seeking the Lord about what they were supposed to do ministering to the Lord, that's praising and worshiping God. You minister to Him, He'll minister back unto you. You want to be led by the Holy Spirit? You want to hear what He has to say? You want to get revelation from Him? You need to minister to Him. And in this case, they even fasted to silence the flesh. Fasting shuts down the flesh, so you get in a position to hear in the Spirit. And of course they heard. 
And then they went forth and did what God wanted to do. They fasted and prayed. They laid their hands on them and they sent them away. They went forth, sent forth by the Holy Spirit. You want to be led by the Holy Spirit. You want to hear what He wants you to do. But you need to be ready to hearken to it, of course, and not just ignore it. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith today, if you will hear His voice. we got to be willing to hear His voice. We can't just be those that, you know, will think about it <laughs> if we're going to want to tell us something. It literally means if you might hear His voice, not will, subjunctive mood. That means you've got to get yourself in a position to hear His voice and be, be ready to obey the ones who are going to hear Him and know what the truth is, the ones who are going to do what He says. The ones that just want to, you know, tell me something and I'll think about it, they're not going to get anywhere. If you might hear His voice, harden not your hearts in the provocation of the day of temptation. They didn't obey. They didn't do what they were told. If you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, you need to be ready to do what He want, tells you to do and always do the Word. Not play pick and choose and I'll think about it. Well, that means you're in the driver's seat instead of God if you're going to think about it. And you're not going to be hearing from the Holy Spirit if you're more or less dictating and making the decisions on what you're going to do. No, you want to hear from Him and follow what He says. What happened to these guys? Now, your fathers tempted me, proved me, saw my works 40 years. I was grieved with that generation. They always err in their heart. They've not known my ways because you won't know his ways if you're not going to do what he says. And they didn't get revelation of it. And said, so I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. You won't enter into the spiritual rest of God if you won't hearken unto his voice and do the things that he wants you to do. We must walk in his ways. We must hear the voice of the Lord. God can speak to you a lot of different ways. He can speak to you through an angel. We see over in Acts, example of this, Acts chapter 8, verse 26, it says, The angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south of the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. Meaning it's not always the Holy Spirit. It may be an angel speaking to you. But one thing for sure, if anything that appears to you that is a female angel, don't believe it. It's a lie. There are no female angels. It's all a lie. They're all male. These so-called prophets and people that supposedly led this great revival back some 12, 15 years ago or so that thought that they were leading a tremendous revival in the world were listening to female angels. And they were the so-called prophets that thought that they were leading prophets in the world. <laughs> and they're still around. And they, most of them they haven't repented. They're still listening to the same false angels, false voices, their lies. And the whole thing came crashing down, of course, because it wasn't God whatsoever. And the guy who was leading it was committing adultery with his wife. That finished it off for sure. Now, Make sure you're only hearing that which is in line with the Word of God and any female angels will be a lie. It'll be deception. Same time, you must understand that God will manifest Himself. As He says, He'll manifest Himself and the Holy Spirit will, different ways. It says it come to pass in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out My Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. It's going to be by the Holy Spirit. Young men will see visions. You'll see visions. Old men will dream dreams. You can get visions and dreams. They might come from angels. They might come from the Holy Spirit. They can come lots of different ways that God can be speaking to you and showing you things. You want to be sure that if you do get a vision or a dream, that you don't interpret it yourself. Many people try to, you know, they just try to figure it out. That's a mistake. You don't want to try to figure it out yourself. Look what Daniel said. As for these four ch children, God gave them knowledge and skill and learning wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Where did he get the understanding from? From God, not from himself. God will give you the revelation of it. You've got to get the revelation from the Lord. Many times, remember, he says he's going to lead you in a plain path, and it'll be plain. 
Some people get all kinds of things and they're trying to figure them out and they're not even from the Lord whatsoever. If it's from God, He will reveal it to you and it'll lead you in a plain path and there won't be any question about it. But you're going to have to get spiritual revelation from Him at the same time about it. So you don't try to interpret yourself or just try to figure it out yourself. Many people have done that and made big mistakes. And you don't want to make that mistake. It's interesting, the scripture over in Job, Job 33, verse 14. God speaketh once, yea, twice, man perceives it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, he slum and slumbering upon the bed. Then he opens the ears of men and sealeth their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. God will always be leading you. Anything will be in line with what he wants for you. But he's opened your ears of your, uh, and bring forth his instruction to you to show you what to do. There will be a purpose for a vision or a dream. It will be a revelation from him of something that he wants you to know or to show you something so that you will then move in the right direction for what he has. And we'll be sharing a little bit later about person, some per personal testimony about these things. Another thing you must realize is that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to preach the gospel and to overcome whatever might come at you. You don't let the devil chase you away. Acts chapter 13, verse 6. Here they'd gone through the Isle of Paphos. They found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet of Jews. His name was Bar-Jesus. He was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Paul, Barnabas, and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. Well, would this sorcerer like to see that happen? No. Elimus, the sorcerer, as his name is by interpretation, withstood them. He's trying to stop them from getting this testimony to him and share the word with them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, they just didn't throw in the towel and said, well, I guess we'll go try to find somebody else. No. Saul, who's called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost. This is why you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You don't do this in the flesh or you're going nowhere. You got to be in the Spirit and you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit for the direction, the leading of the Holy Spirit. Well, filled with the Holy Spirit, that meant he must have been a praiser and a worshiper and praying in tongues and doing the things that caused the filling of the Holy Spirit. Remember, he said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Ah, he understood how he'd get filled with the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues continually. Set his eyes on him. He said, oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteous, will thou not thou cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? He didn't back off. He confronted him. And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Through the filling of the Holy Spirit, serving the God, what God wanted, he spoke that word, and a blindness comes upon him. <laughs> that took care of him. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. This is the doctrine, the teaching of the Lord. That means we don't ever run away from what the enemy's doing. The Holy Spirit will lead you and show you what to do when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're walking led by the Holy Spirit to deal with that situation and to conquer the enemies. You don't run, Jesus didn't go running from anything. He dealt with whatever came at him. That's what we must do. Paul did the same thing. We see it down in chapter 16. We come to verse 16. He came to pass as he went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same Paul followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are servants of the Most High God, which show unto us, it says in the King James, the way of salvation, which means that would be a good thing but it's not the way of salvation. It's not in the Greek. It is, the definite article is not there. 
This is where it says it. Way, salvation. Way is the accusative in a noun, and this is a genitive, which means you would translate it of something. Way of salvation. And prior to this, there is no definite article. It's not talking about the way. The way you translate this is the way Young's translated correctly, a way of salvation. Why was it bad what she was saying? If she had been saying the way of salvation, she'd be pointing to Jesus, wouldn't she? And they aren't going to do that. But she says, a way of salvation, which implies, well, I'm showing you a way of salvation. There's many ways of salvation, which is what is taught in the world today. It's a lie. There's only one way. Well, she's trying to deceive the people away. She did many days. Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Didn't come right out immediately. He obviously had to deal with this over some time. The command wasn't just a one time I say it one time as people think and that's all I do. Present tense, he was commanding continually in the name of Jesus for this to come out of her. And it came out that same hour. He must have had a battle. It might have been 59 minutes and 59 seconds before it finally came out. That's because he kept dealing with it. You don't ever back off. We know that from casting out demons. We don't just command it to come out, something doesn't come out, then we stop. We continually command until it comes out. I have a lot of people say, I have a hard time getting something out of me. Well, you just keep commanding until it comes out. Yeah. Just because it didn't come out, so what? That means they're resisting. That means they have power to resist. So you keep commanding and you keep on putting your faith until you drop those demons start releasing out. You don't back down to the devil. You have authority, remember, over all the power of the enemy. And you are to take it to the enemies and destroy all of their works and drive them out. So important. Now, as you go forth being led by the Holy Spirit, there's going to be tremendous results that are going to happen. In John chapter 14, verse 16, Here he says, I, I will pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Well, that's if you are, of course, walking in line with his word, doing what he says, and you don't deny the Lord or turn away from him. And the comforter, that's the Holy Spirit who will come, comes alongside to minister to you in all kinds of aspects. He'll come to encourage you, to help you, to strengthen you, to, to give you revelation, to teach you all the different things that he'll do. In verse 26, it says he's going to teach you all things. Don't ever think you, think you can't be taught all things. How are we going to be taught? By revelation, not by you figuring it out, not by interpretation but by you reading, believing, thanking Him for giving you revelation of the truth. Comparing scriptures, remember we compare spiritual with spiritual, you must look at all the scriptures because they all fit together like pieces in a jigsaw puzzle, and you don't interpret them and figure out what you think they say. You believe what they say, they're all truths, but you may not understand what that truth is until you have seen all the aspects of it. The Holy Spirit will bring you revelation. And he also will bring all things to remembrance. You've got to know that as this word is written in you, he's going to bring this to your mind. Because the word gets written in you. Your main key is guard it in your heart and your mind so the devil doesn't take it out. Or you don't have any mixture come in. Well, that's going to hinder you. You need to guard your heart with all diligence. Make sure the word's in you. Because remember, when you hear the word, what happens? The devil comes immediately to try to take that word out of your heart, doesn't he? That's why you got to be doing it. You do it and you guard it and you make sure you believe that. You don't ever doubt. You don't ever turn away from it. It gets in you and then he'll bring all these things to your remembrance. Tremendous things that he will do. In John 16, you should have the confidence that he will guide you into all truth. Don't ever believe that lie. Well, we can't, I guess I can't understand this. I'm never, not going to understand this. That's crazy. That's not the truth whatsoever. He'll guide you into all truth. If you don't understand something, 
You say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for bringing revelation to me as I continue to study your word of the revelation of the truth of this. Not throw in the towel and give up. You probably need to learn a whole lot more things before maybe you'll understand what that particular scripture is saying or how it fits and the revelation of it. You've got to study all the scriptures, so you keep on. But the promise is he'll guide you into all the truth. Also, what else will he do? He will show you the things to come, the coming things. God will bring us revelation of the things that are coming. He'll show us these things. We're not to be in the dark about things. We're to know these coming things, and the Holy Spirit will show us these things. As the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you, Exodus 15, verse 13. In thy mercy thou hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto the holy habitation. He's going to strengthen you. They're going to, the word of God's going to strengthen you. The Holy Spirit will work to strengthen you and bring you to the holy habitation because that's when God can manifest himself. He's going to manifest himself in holy vessels. He's not going to manifest himself in those that are not walking in his ways. We see in Exodus 23, verse 30, By little and little I'll drive them out from before thee, until thou be increased and inherit the land. You and I are to be, the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to drive out all those enemies. Cast them all out. Not just one shot. He's going to teach you to do the word until you be increased, which means to bear fruit. Otherwise, you're going to be keep casting out until you bear fruit. And he will bring you up against all of these enemies. In fact, if we go back to verse 20 and following, Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee to the place which I prepared, which is what he'll do. I'll beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he'll not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. If thou indeed obey his voice to all that I speak, then I'll be an enemy to thy enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries. That means your obedience to the word is a key to see these angels work. They aren't going to work automatically. It's only when you meet the conditions. My angel shall go before thee, and he's not going to lead you away from your enemies. He's going to bring you in unto all the ites. You're going to confront them. You're going to attack them and deal with them. That's why we always tell people, everything in you is going to come up to come out. Because you've got to face it, you've got to deal with it, and cast it out, and get it all dealt with. And everything's got to be corrected in our life. He's going to bring you into all these ites, and all these ites are a type of all the evil spirits that are in us that have come in. We're going to confront everything. We can drive everything out and correct everything and see God accomplish everything that he purposes for us. We see in Deuteronomy chapter 8, the tremendous work that he will do. Thou shalt remember all the way the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee, prove thee, to know what's in thine heart, whether you would keep the commandments or not. His leading is to find out whether you're the real deal or not. He humbled thee, suffered thee to hunger, fed thee manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. When you come to the place, the Holy Spirit, of leading you and showing you that you live by the word of God, you'll start living by it all the time. And you'll realize the word, that is how I'm going to live. How did Jesus do everything? He was upholding all things by the spoken word of his power. He spoke all the things into being. He brought everything into being through the word of God as he spoke it into being. That's what God will do for you. The Holy Spirit's working in your life. Here in Deuteronomy 32 and 9, he talks about the Lord's portions, his people, and Jacob's the lot of his inheritance. And now he found him in a desert land in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about. God found us, whatever state we're in, and we got our eyes on him, we started being led about. He instructed him. He's going to show us we've got to be instructed in the way of the Lord. He kept him as the apple of his eye. He was guarding and watching over them. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttering over a young, spreadeth broader wings, taketh them, beareth them on their wings. God will carry you along if you walk in line with the word. 
So the Lord alone did lead them. Ah, that's what we want. There was no strange God with them because they all have to be eliminated. You've got to be led by the Lord. Nothing evil is to be leading you. He made them ride on the high places of the earth. Oh, that's well, operating authority and victory. That he might eat the increase of the fields. That's prosperity. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. <laughs> Miraculous works coming forth. Butter of kind, milk of sheep, fat of lambs, rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fats of kidney and wheat. That is drink the pure blood of the grape. I mean, he's prospering everything that they have, bringing them all provision of everything. That's what God will do. Total prosperity this refers to. He'll prosper you in everything that he brings forth in your life. And you're going to ride on the high places of the earth. When the Holy Spirit's also leading you, you're going to come to the place of where the enemy is not going to have place in your life. Psalm 17, verse 4, concerning the works of men, the word of my, by the word of my lips, I've kept me from the paths of the destroyer. The enemy wants you to get on his path so he can take you down. No, by the word of God, we're going to be kept from the paths of the destroyer. We're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. We're going to conquer and overcome and see God bring forth everything that he wants. God's also going to lead you not into all these turbulent things, Look what it says in Psalms 23, 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads you into his rest. Not into all those turbulent things. Anything that's come. Remember, you will have pressure, but you can speak to those mountains. You can resist every temptation. You can resist every devil and they'll flee from you. You can speak to anything and it will be eliminated. Jesus didn't get blocked and hindered. Anything that came at him, he dealt with it successfully. And that's exactly what you and I can do. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. He will always lead you in line with the word, the way of the word of God, the way of righteousness at all times. And a scripture we gave this morning, but it's important to see it again. Psalms 27, 11, teach thee me thy way, O Lord, lead me in a plain path <clears throat> because of my enemies. He leads you in a plain path. It's no guesswork about it. He shows you what to do, just do it and walk in it. And he will lead you and guide you and enable you to overcome and not see the enemies bring destruction against you in your life. And as we mentioned, you've got to be a warrior man. Psalms 37, 23, we talked about this this morning as well. The steps, and he's the one who directs your steps, of the valiant warrior, strong man, gay bear man, are ordered by the Lord. You're going to be a warrior. It takes a warrior to overcome and to walk in the spirit and see the victory. And God is at work. He raises you up to be a warrior. He called you to be a warrior. You're going to war the good warfare, fight the good fight, conquer all the enemies in every area of your life. Psalms 43, verse 3. O send out thy light and thy truth. Thee. Let them lead them. Let them bring me into the holy hill, into thy tabernacles. Where's God going to end up leading you? To the holy place, the holy hill, and to his dwelling place. Otherwise, holiness in the place where God will dwell. He's not going to dwell in an unclean vessel and manifest himself. He's going to dwell in one who has come to the place of holiness. He will always lead you in that way. Also, when he's lead you on, we see in Psalm 78, verse 52, the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life, he made his own people to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them on safely, so they feared not. God will lead you safely. He'll protect you. Securely, in security, safely. He's your protector. The angel's going to have charge over you to keep you in all of your ways when you meet the conditions. So they fear not. Fear gives place to the enemy. You cannot give place to the fear. It continually says, fear not, fear not, fear not, throughout the word. Warning you that you cannot be giving place to fear. You need to resist it and cast out all those spirits of fear. Well, he led them on safely even when the enemies were chasing after them. Now the sea overwhelmed their enemies. 
God will take care of the enemies and deal with them successfully. We see over in Psalms 106, God will always lead you in the right path. Psalms 106, verse 9, He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. He led them through the depths as through the wilderness. And God will lead you. He saved them from the hand of them that hated Him and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. God will save you. If He can save them, He can save us. He can protect us. It doesn't matter what evil is designed against us. We can be protected in whatever situation we're dealing with in life if we follow the way of the Lord and be obedient unto Him. Do the things that He tells us to do and hearken unto His voice. The waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. <laughs> God will smite all the enemies. But you know you can't compromise on anything. Remember Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They couldn't compromise. Said, you throw us in the fire, our God whom we serve will, he can and he will deliver us. You don't, you know, we're not going to bow. You don't throw us in the fire. God, you know, we're, we're not going to submit to you whatsoever. You've got to take an uncompromised stand. You're going to do the right thing. Psalms 107. One thing, though, you have to know, the Holy Spirit will always lead you in the right way. If something didn't pan out, it must not have been the Holy Spirit. Some people thought, well, I thought, sure, it was the Holy Spirit. He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. God will always lead you in the right way, and it will be proven out by the fruit and the results. The right way. And that's important. A lot of people hear voices and they think it's the Holy Spirit. And it turns out it's not. It wasn't the Holy Spirit whatsoever. It was demons talking to them, telling them all kinds of stuff, trying to deceive them. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. He'll make it straight and plain before you so you'll know what to do in every situation. And when God is leading you, every need will be met. Isaiah, chapter 48, verse 21. They thirsted not when He led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He claved the rock also, and the waters gushed out. Supernatural provision. Remember when the famine was in the land and the cruise of oil never stopped. It kept filling up and filling up and filling up, didn't it? Through the whole time of the famine of that widow. You're going to have to understand God's a supernatural God who will provide for you regardless of what happens down the road. You need to believe that He will provide for you and multiply. He multiply the, the, the fishes and the loaves. God is a miraculous God. He brought the ravens, you know, <laughs> to minister to him, brought, the, the, you know, the prophet. God can do all kinds of things. He will provide for us. You know, that's why it says that famine, <laughs> and famine's going to come, you know. We're going to laugh at it. God's going to provide for you. He's going he's to be your provider when you believe him. He will provide for us and meet every one of our needs. We've got to have faith and trust in Him and know what He'll do. Isaiah 63, verse 12, They led Him by the right hand of Moses with His glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make Himself an everlasting name that led them through the deep as a horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble. When God leads you, you won't stumble. Well, people always think, well, I'm always going to fall. That's not true. He'll cause you not to stumble. He'll so lead you so you will not fall. Don't believe any of those lies that tell you that you're always going to fall. It's not the truth whatsoever. Jude 124, Now him that's able to guard you from falling and present you faultless without blemish before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. That's God. We're not going to fall. We're going to be faultless. We're going to walk in the ways of the Lord and see God accomplish all the things that He purposes in us. We see over in Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah chapter 2. When God's leading you, you will come in victory. Neither they said, Where is the Lord that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, led us through the wilderness, through the land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and the doubt, shadow of death, through a land that no man passed through, where no man dwelt? He said, And I brought you a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. And when you entered, you defiled my land and made mine heritage an abomination. He led them and provided for them. And then they're the ones that defiled the place. God's always going to lead you in the right path, and he'll lead you to walk in the ways of victory in your life, always. Whatever the situation is, you've got to know that God's going to provide for you totally. And when you go forth, it says in Isaiah chapter 55, what will he do? Verse 12, you shall go forth with joy, and you shall be led forth with peace. And the mountains and hills will break forth before you to sing, the all the trees of the field will clap your hands. doesn't matter what the situation. You can have joy and peace at all times, and God will provide for you, meet every need, enable you to overcome, conquer everything that would come against you. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Jesus didn't even have a place to lay his head. He didn't have a house or whatever to go to. And God met every need, and he conquered every enemy that was arrayed against him. He will bring forth victory for you in your life. And you must understand that in these last days, we see in Haggai, chapter 1, verse 12 and following, where he talks about these ones, the remnant of the people. It's the remnant who are going to be raised up mighty in these last days. They obeyed the voice of the Lord. You've got to be obedient. Obedience is mandatory. It says the Lord sent them and the people did fear before the Lord. They had the fear of God before them. And the Lord says, I am with you. That was his message to them. God will be with you and lead you and guide you and protect you. And whatever the situation comes. Verse 14, the remnant, they came and did work in the house of the Lord. You're going to do work in you, the house of the Lord, to work out your own salvation and to see this work be accomplished, the building up of the spiritual house of God in you so you become strong, mighty, cleansed, holy before Him, full of fruit, mighty. That is what God wants in your life. In the seventh month, the prophetic of the end time church, 21st day, end, end of the church age, is prophetic of, he speaks it again to the residue, which is the remnant. This is what's going to happen. Who's left among you that saw this house in her first glory? How do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes? In comparison, it was nothing. The first house was the early church. Be strong. You're going to get strong. And be a doer or work or do a saw in the Hebrew. For I am with you. God's going to cause everybody who's going to be a part of the remnant to become strong. The weak, they're going to get taken down. You're not to be weak, you're to be strong in the Lord, the power of His might, having the armor of God on through the Word in you in all aspects. And he says, fear ye not. Why would you make sure you don't fear? Because of all the things that are going to be happening. I mean, it's going to be some ride. He said, yet once it's a little while, and I'll shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. Everything is going to be shaken tremendously. It's coming. I'll shake all nations. The desire of all nations shall come, and I'll fill this house with glory. This is what's going to happen. The Holy Spirit's going to lead you to do the total work in your life, to come to perfection, and you, the house of God, is going to be filled with the glory of God. That's the manifest presence of God. The silver's mine, the gold's mine. Yeah, he can, he'll provide for us, saith the Lord. Glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. And in this place will I give peace. This is the word shalom, which means total completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, health, prosperity, safety, quiet, total victory. That's what he will bring us to. If you're going to trust in the Lord. You're going to believe his word. You're going to know that he is going to perform his word and bring everything to pass for you in your life. Praise God.
Now you're going to have to learn to follow the Lord in what he tells you to do. And I just want to share some things just to encourage you a testimony of how God has done things in our life. When we were in Ohio after 28 years, or after 23 years, five years before we came here, we had a church building, we owned a church building, and when we were painting the church building at that time, Renee was cleaning the double pane glass doors of the church. And as she was doing it, she heard the Lord say, you are preparing the church to sell. We had no idea about that, no plans to do that. Yet he said, you're preparing the church to sell. This is five years before all this is going to happen. God can show you things quite a period of time to get you understanding what's happening. Well, during the next five years, several things happened. The property next door to our church was sold to Walgreens, and in order for them to put a Walgreens in uh, with the city, they had all kind of problems, and they had to lower the elevation and had to do a whole lot of things because it was kind of a coming down a slope down the hill. Well, in order to do that, well, they had to do some changes, and so they came to us and said, uh, we'd like to do some adjustments to your property if that's okay with you. And they did. They redid, redid our entire side, <laughs> the whole west side of the thing, paved the thing, put in a nice stone thing, put in a new walkway, and all kinds of things, and just refixed the whole area. And then, so that was getting it ready to for sale. Well, and I approached them and I said, well, see, we had a gravel parking lot. I said, well, this looks great on this side, but the other side has stones. Oh, would you guys be willing to pave the other side? And they said, sure. They gave us $7,500, we paved the other side. <laughs> Getting it set. God worked that situation. We also had, a, uh, the roof was pretty old. A severe hailstorm happened to come through Columbus, Ohio and damaged all the roofs and that was tremendous. It was all these roofs, you know, were, were damaged and so the federal people came on the scene and said, well, we're going to be paying for any of these roofs, federal insurance. The roof was almost 20 years old. Ours was one of the one damaged. They put a whole new roof on it at no cost for us, getting it ready. While the construction of this Walgreens was going on, they hit a water main and it flooded our basement. We had a basement. Well, they fixed all that and recarpeted all the stuff that needed to be fixed. Oh, that was another getting things ready to go. And so we're getting ready. This is going over over time. And God has said, you're going to be selling it. We didn't have any idea what we were doing. So God began to speak things. And Renee would hear a lot of things that God would start to speak to her. And he started showing her, and he said, showed her the fact that we would be moving out of that city. And that we were gonna, he's going to move us far away. God will give you little bits many times, just little bits by little bits. And then she heard one day, in the desert, He'll give us rain. And she says, the time when many times she hears things is in the midst of praise and worship when she's ministering to the Lord in the presence of God. In the desert, he'll give us rain. Well, that tells us, well, that means we must be relocating to the, wherever the desert is. There was a woman who was sick with terminal cancer in our church. We had a lot of people. We had 22 people who got healed of cancer. But this woman wouldn't stop her smoking. She liked her smoking. Well, are you going to get free of it if you keep on your sin? No. And the Lord told Renee that at the time of this woman's death would be the time that we would be moving. Well, you've got, you got to know you're hearing from the Lord on that one. That means at the time we're going to be moving, this is the same time when this woman's going to die? That's right. And you know, people can go and last for a long time, you know, when they have situations. And then she had a vision. Sometimes you'll hear a vision or whatever. She had a vision of a Santa Fe style house, which is one of those houses that's kind of high here and then it goes down. It's kind of one that's similar to a lot of houses that you see in this area. And she saw that vision. 
And that was a reason because we were going to see that later on. We were going, at that time, we were going all over the place. I was on, on 17 different stations. We were doing deliverance seminars all over the place. And we've been to Portland, and this is the fifth time we went to Portland. And so we came to Portland and did a deliverance seminar. This is in June of 2009. And we had some people that we knew that were friends there that invited us to come out to their place, lived in Sandy, and to go up and see Mount Hood and go up there. And, you know, we'd never been out to that area. So we went up there and we went to their house and, and they were looking to invest in some things. And when they came to the house, they were saying, hey, we're thinking about investing in some property in the Phoenix area, and we got a real estate guy. If you want to look at it, you can look at it. She opens up the thing, and she sees the house that she saw in the vision. What does that tell you? That tells you that that's why the house was seen in the vision, because it was showing us where we're going to be going. God can, can do all kinds of things to show you. You just got to be waiting on him and in tune, letting him show you things. So we come to Phoenix. We did a deliverance seminar. Some, some of you were even in it, I think, in July of 2009 at, here in Phoenix. After we'd been to Portland, we came here and did one. And um, when we were driving through the area, we were just kind of driving around. We passed a house that she said, that's exactly the same kind of house I saw in the vision. The second time we had seen it, or really the third time counting the vision. <laughs> well, God's certainly telling you and showing you little bit by little bit, bringing all these confirmations one after another, that obviously things, this is what we're to do. So by this time, now here we're in August, you know, we get back and we got, knew what, what we were gonna be doing and so we had put the house, we had actually put up the church building for sale. God had told us to put the church up, building up for sale a few months before, a couple months before, and we had put it up for sale. Well, and we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know anything. We just knew to put it up for sale. So we did. And as we were looking for everything to work out, we also had our house to sell. We also are involved in a business that we needed to sell. So there were three things that had to get finished. When it came the time, when it was time, and we knew it was the time to go, in an eight-day period, the house closed, the church building closed, and the sale of the business closed from a Friday through a Friday. And in the midst of that week, on Wednesday, the lady who had the cancer died exactly what she had said came to pass. And we had already, the movers came and packed up on Thursday and Friday, and they left on Saturday and we left on Sunday and came here. God can, he did that all at that time, just put that whole thing together. And I'll tell you about how we got this building here for a moment. When we came here, we're looking for a building and looking for a kind of a centralized location where it could, you know, people could come to. And we happened to see this area, and we found this maintenance man. He was in the area, and he happened to have, to have the keys to the property. And so he, I said, hey, can we look at this place? And so he let us look at it. We're looking for a place that was air conditioning. The place had been a print shop, and it was a mess. And it would need extensive work to make it to become a church. Well. We approached the people, and they said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. It was going to cost them $22,000, they figured, to renovate the place, and they were not interested in doing that whatsoever. So they said no. So we're looking for other buildings, and we finally found a place. We weren't really excited about it, but we were going to go ahead and take another building so we could get started. And this is the day when we were going to sign this lease. On the morning of that day, I woke up in the morning, and this is another way the Holy Spirit will lead you. Sometimes you might have a dream or a vision or speak to you. This time, it wasn't anything like that, which is when I woke up in the morning, the best way to describe it is I had a knowing within. I just knew it. I had knowing within that the real estate company, they were going to contact me that day about this property. That's all I knew. I just knew it. And it meant, told it to him, you know, to Renee. Well, I looked at the emails a couple times, nothing came through. And then we ate lunch and then getting ready because we we're gonna go to this other place, you know, take this other building. 
and I checked it, and it was about 1.30, and an email came through from this company saying, we changed our mind, we're going to do the work, we're offering you the place. And we got it. God came through at the right time. Came through. You know, if we just stay in the Spirit and we walk with God and we obey Him and listen to Him and pray, He'll lead you and guide you and the things that He wants. And this is, was this tremendous what God has done. He'll do the same thing for any of us. He's no respecter of persons. He'll lead you and guide you on the, the big things that are very important for what you need to do so you do the right thing. We just have to put the Word of God first place. We've got to trust in Him. We've got to keep our eyes on Him and listen to what He says. He may not tell you everything in one shot. It was like bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And then this lady's going to die. <laughs> you've got to know you're hearing something right then. That's why you've got to learn to hear the Lord and know it's the Lord. And test and make sure it's right. That's why being led by the Holy Spirit and her learning to hear the voice of the Lord is so important in your life. Because you've got to know. You've got to know that you know that you know it, it's, it, you're not hearing something that's wrong. And it's going to be confirmed and it's going to be proven too. It'll start out with little things. Like with Renee, for instance, she would get visions of things and see things when the kids were young that they were doing bad. And she would see it like in a vision or a dream or whatever God would show her. And then she'd go to the place and find out what they were trying to hide or, you know, do, and discovered it. They got called on the carpet and nailed. It was all God that did it. But you learn to trust the Lord as you're seeking and praying, and he starts showing you things. That's what every one of us need. Learn to hear the voice of the Lord, be led by the Holy Spirit, get in line with the Word of God, let him, let him have his way, be praising and worshiping him, and be listening, be tuned in. You'd be surprised what he'll speak to you. And when you get up in the morning, listen, I have this happen to me a lot of times. God will speak to me of different things or put things in my heart or my mind or whatever, just getting up in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I need, or you know, just, I just know, yeah, I need to do that. Yeah, th this is something we need to do. Things like that. God will lead you and guide you and show you. The Holy Spirit has come to dwell in you and He wants to manifest in you. If he will do it for every single one of us. So as we learn to be led by the Holy Spirit, we'll see these tremendous results and you're going to need it for the days coming because the days are evil. Yes. And you've got to be hearing Him and knowing that He will provide supernaturally and provide for you in every situation, leading you and guiding. You have authority over all the devils. You can conquer and overcome every situation. That's why we tell everybody, with this, this virus stuff, you bind all the devils. You thank, you take hold of the promise. You thank the Father for protecting you and keeping you from any viruses anywhere you go, or any of the shedding from the transmission of things, or whatever wave might come down the road. It doesn't matter. You've got authority over all sickness and all disease. You can, you can stay healthy and well and protected. We've got to believe the word. Get your faith in operation now. Be casting everything out of you so you're not so receptive to things. This is the time to work out our own salvation and get free, get strong, get full of power, get full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom and full of all the things that God wants power. He wants you to be a dynamo for the Lord. He will do great things if we will do what he says. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Holy Spirit. As I've received the Holy Spirit, he's come to dwell in me, to walk in me, to lead me and guide me, to teach me, to provide for me, to accomplish everything that I need. I will listen and obey and do what he says and meet all the conditions to be led by the Holy Spirit and have confidence that he will do it and learn to hear the voice of the Lord who speaks in many ways, discovering what he's telling me to do. Be obedient to it so I will be led by the Holy Spirit in every situation and I will overcome and walk in victory. 
thank you for the Holy Spirit dwelling in us and leading and guiding us and enabling us to overcome in every situation. In Jesus' name, amen. He will do that. He's a performer of his word. Praise God. Father, thank you for all you brought forth in these messages about how to be led by the Holy Spirit and the wonderful results of what he'll accomplish and also understanding that we must come to the place of hearing your voice, knowing you, knowing the voice of the Holy Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit for these last days. Thank you for each one of us coming to that place and then seeing your miraculous total provision leading, guiding, accomplishing everything that you purpose as every one of us are led by the Holy Spirit. Thank you for doing it in each one of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.